as a Sega fanboy, it's kind of confusing where I stand now, where gaming companies are concerned. Honestly, I like Nintendo. <laughs> Yes guys, you heard right. These days I like Nintendo. And for a Sega fanboy, like I said, it's a very confusing thing. Seems like they used to be rivals. Mm -mm, yeah. There should be an explosion in between the two panels. Just boom. I, I don't know. I, I'm generally confused. Now, let me just make one thing clear. I don't hate Sega at this point. I still love Sega, they were my first love where gaming is concerned, but Nintendo have taken that helm of, they've kind of taken the helm off Sega and they've got some of the weirder obscure games that Sega used to have. And while a lot of that is to do with the fact that Sega are putting their games on Nintendo consoles, a lot of it is the fact that Nintendo have filled that void of weird and obscure games, and it's it's one of them. I, I don't even know where to stand. However, there's been some speculation about what Nintendo are going to show at E3. Now, E3 I'm looking forward to. I have all this generation's consoles, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch. But, there are a few games which I'm generally looking forward to, and generally trying to make a big deal in my head. One being Metro Prime 4, which was shown off last year, which we've heard nothing else of. I'm hoping that gets some gameplay or something this year. If not, Nintendo, I'm coming after you. <clears throat> Can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also, maybe something a little bit new in Nintendo's scenario. Because let's face it, let's face what we've come across right now. Nintendo are pretty much rehashing a lot of their games for the Switch that were already on the Wii U. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, I'm looking at you. Nintendo, do something different. Now, I, I love you, but stop the ports of games, or stop remaking games and putting them on newer hardware. Mm, yeah. Mm. But then again, a lot of game companies are very, very... Um, jumpy with that. Sorry about the banging, that is downstairs. Um, but, it's, it's weird. It's weird. I, I don't actually know where to stand where Nintendo's E3 is going to be. I'm hoping for something good, because as you know, the Switch that I have is, well, I'm loving it so far. I, I just am. Um, bearing in mind, I've already played Breath of the Wild. I spent 50 five hours on the first time I played it and it picked it up when I typed in my um, Nintendo account on my Switch how many hours I've been playing it and I've restarted the game because obviously I got rid of my last Switch and then I re-bought the Switch and then I'm replaying it again and I've been dragged in it yet again I thought that I wouldn't get dragged into Breath of the Wild but I did I did and now I'm over 100 hours on that so yeah um I live a sad life. However, let's just talk about some of the previous consoles that Nintendo have done as well. Because I think without those consoles, whether they've been failures or otherwise, Nintendo have always kind of dragged it back. It's a very weird scenario, I don't know. So, let's talk about the NES. Now the NES has one of the biggest followings I've ever seen um, in America. and in the UK. Fair enough, there are other consoles which we focus on, such as Commodore and stuff like that, but the fact of the matter is, Nintendo was still a big presence. It's one of my very first consoles, um, before I wasn't allowed one. Then came the Super Nintendo, and pretty much blew the proverbial water out of the proverbial pool. Um, yes, and it just exploded. And then came the FX chip in certain cartridges, which you could play basically 3D games made with polygons. Um, and it really did 
solidify what Nintendo were all about, and it got to the point where Nintendo were exploding, pretty much. Everybody wondered what was new for Nintendo after the Super Nintendo, and that was the N64. And let's face it, the N64, let's face it, it didn't do as well as Nintendo had hoped. It did do what it needed to do, but it didn't do everything that Nintendo hoped. Mainly because Sony jumped onto the scene, and let's face it, that went well for Sony. Everybody else it kind of floored, including Atari, because they had the Jaguar, which just disappeared. It, yeah. It's weird. It's very weird. Ironically enough, if I believe correctly, now don't hold me to this, I'm going to try and find a picture to put up here, but the Atari Jaguar consoles were made into a medical product of some sort. The actual shell of the consoles were filled with um, tech that were in medical offices and things like that, and they used the shells for them for the Atari Jaguar to use put their stuff. It's, I'll get a picture here. I'm not... It's a weird scenario. I found that out randomly, and I just thought it was really, really funny. I, I just did. It was hilarious. Anyway, after that, the N64 came the GameCube. The GameCube was something of an enigma. Because it wasn't bad, but it wasn't into the good either. It was a very weird mix of that generation, even though the PlayStation 2 was like top of its game, Xbox were pretty much the baby in this because they brought out the original Xbox, and then Nintendo again settled in the middle. They made the money they needed to, but they settled kind of in that middle ground. The new boy was getting some love, and the high-spec company Sony were getting some love. Nintendo, well, yeah. So after that, I'm guessing Nintendo needed to make their impact known all over again, and that came the Wii. Now, what can I say about the Wii? Not very much, because it does have a big following, and it's self-explanatory. It was the, one of the best-selling consoles of its generation. And while that was all good and well, some of the games were questionable. Very questionable. Um, Sonic and the Secret Rings, I am looking at you. Terrible game. Terrible, terrible game. Terrible game. Just horrible. Anyway, enough of the memories. After the Wii, nobody could really see what Nintendo was going to do after that. Nobody kind of had anything in their mind what Nintendo was going to do. They thought it might have something to do with motion controls, from who I've talked to and videos I've seen. But little did we know it was something generally completely different. Um, obviously they brought out the Wii U. The Wii U being something that was good in practice, although its sales didn't exactly burst any bottles. It, it, I don't want to go as far to say that it was a failure as such. It did have its following, like the Wii U, but it was nowhere near as big as it should have been. Now, honestly, I think it's a very, very underrated console. I'm not being funny, but with games like this, it should have exploded. Not only that, there were loads and loads of others, which were just brilliant. It didn't have anywhere near as much shovelware as the Wii U did, but yet the Wii U was a bigger selling console, which was okay, fair enough. But with games like this, it should have been immense. However, Going from the Wii U, and the idea of that, with the gamepad being the screen, which is down there for me, it is literally something that was in practice very, very good. The idea was somebody could watch TV while you were playing the game on your gamepad, which was amazing. It was brilliant. And it was a brilliant idea, and it did work. But you, could, you had to kind of stay in the same room with it. You couldn't actually have your... Wii U controller in a separate room, which it just cut off connection. I've done it, it's horrible, and yeah. And the lag that you get was pretty immense when you're in a different room, if you even get a signal. But still, it was a work in progress. 
And here is where I think Nintendo got the kick for the Switch. Because their idea with the Wii U was the fact that you could basically game while somebody else was watching telly, like I said. The Switch is a completely new definition of that. The Switch, you like you have you have the gamepad and the actual screen, which are two separate modules. So you can take take the actual controls out, flip them into your grip, and there you go. Hey presto sorted. If you want to take it out or you want to play it indoors while somebody else is watching the telly or playing a different console even in my case, take your Joy-Cons out of the grip, clip them onto the console, take the console out, go and sit down with it. Yeah, it's that, it's that simple game design which is just brilliant. And that simple hardware design which, to my, to my view, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Without the Wii U, if the Wii U is just a terrestrial console, like every other console with a gamepad and a unit to play the games on, we wouldn't have got the Switch. It's that simple. We would not have got the Switch. And while the Wii U stands as a failure to most people, I'm going to count it as a brilliant, brilliant success for Nintendo, because it wasn't for that gamepad, the clunky massive, plasticky, cheap feeling gamepad, we would not have got the Switch. And honestly, in my book, that's going to count as a win. So there you go guys. I thought I'd just give you my personal thoughts and history on Nintendo, which I hope you've enjoyed. And like I said, without Wii U, there would be no Switch. Or at least that's my thoughts. So guys, in the meantime, like, comment, subscribe, and I shall see you guys in the next video. And as always, happy gaming.